for, for you, for being in this world for so long, the concerns that you must have had when you first started, have any of them borne out to be a concern about somebody doing a long-term ketogenic or carnivore diet? Never. That's that's the interesting thing. I, I've, I've done ketosis uh, or some degree of it um, from, I'm right now about 95% carnivore myself, but the but some form of ketogenic diet for literally 18 years, solid. Um, and it, it has been life-saving for me. So if you remember, I had the same labs my dad did at 32, looked like my dad at that age group. Um, my dad's first heart attack was in his 40s, early 40s, 42. He ended up having five heart attacks over, over the years. The first one was a quintuple bypass and then multiple stents thereafter, and then died at 58 of kidney failure because of all these issues. Um, I just had a heart cath because an ER doctor in Florida thought I was dying. And it was actually just really bad food poisoning. Um, and the heart cath showed... He basically, the cardiologist came to me and said, you have the cleanest arteries of a 54 year old I've ever seen. And so I, I know that 18 years of this keeps these, the stuff clean. That's my personal experience. I've seen that with multiple patients. I've seen reversal of plaque in now six of my current patients, um, in both heart and carotids. So I know this works long-term there. The only reason people say it's not sustainable is because it's not, it's not easy to cook every meal. Most people are so lazy. We're so used to eating fast food that people go, well, it's not sustainable. You can't sustain that. Well, it, it actually is if you cook and prepare your own meals um, and you actually are more healthy that way, but that takes time and it takes effort and you have to have a why there must be, has to be a reason. Why are you doing this? You know, my, my why is I want to be around for my grandkids. That's what I want to do. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be dead when, when, when at 58, that's not my desire. But in order to do that, I know I have to eat a certain way. I know I have to stay physically active. I have to be, you know, and so, and then the other thing is now my, I've got kids and family. How do I teach my family to do it and not fear food? Because, you know, on the flip side, you can create um, anorexia and you can create food fear. And so you have to, the most important thing is teaching people, carbohydrates play a role. Fat plays a role. Protein plays a role. You need to understand why are you using those fuels? Um, and what a, a lot of people don't realize is that they're not bad. You just get certain responses from those foods. And, and that's what it's taken me, you know, for the first 10 years of my practice was trying to learn. I used to say, well, carbs are bad. Carbs aren't bad. They're just a certain, they, they're, they have a hormonal response as does fat and as does protein. So if you realize that the food you put in your mouth has a hormonal signal to your body, then it, then you can start to approach it a different way.